Hello, this is a second video in a series on multiple regression. In this video, I'll show you how to run the multiple regression using Excel 2007. We're using the same data as in the first video, pulse rate data that I collected a few years ago walking on a treadmill. We're using uh, incline as x1, speed as x2. They're both quantitative variables, and pulse is my quantitative response. And in the previous video, I showed you how to make a scatter plot matrix. It's still here. I'll get rid of this, however. So I'll just delete these scatter plots. And uh, these merge cells, too. Okay. And uh, what I should have also showed you in the last video is how to make a correlation matrix. So I can do that quickly. Let's go data data analysis, correlation, press OK. Here's my input range. Again, we're ignoring the time period, but it may be an important factor. Uh, labels in the first row, output range. Let's put that right there. Press OK. Here's my correlation matrix. Uh, I can edit this a little bit. Uh, we don't need these ones down the diagonal. I can totally get rid of this column. So I erase some blank. Oops. I'll just delete the whole column. And I'll delete this row. Okay, so and let's format to three decimal places for correlation. Okay. And uh, these correspond to the picture somewhat that we saw in the scatter plot matrix. Uh, the relationship between pulse and incline can be summarized with Pearson's correlation coefficient. There's a moderate uh, positive relationship. And for speed, a little bit stronger. And then between the two x variables, incline and speed, no relationship. And I again, I had done that on purpose because I was able to choose the x1 and, and x2 values, incline and speed, so that they were unrelated to each other. So I did a designed experiment here choosing my x values and randomly assigning the combinate the treatment combinations to my uh, subjects here, the period, the time periods. Okay, let's get rid of this. And uh, what we see from this correlation matrix and the previous scatter plot matrix is that it looks like incline and speed have some kind of relationship to the response. So maybe together they'll help us understand the response better, better than an individual uh, simple regression would do on using one variable at a time. Okay, let's go data, data analysis, regression. Press OK. My response is pulse. And my input X range are both incline and speed. Press OK, or uh, highlight. Labels in the first row. Output range, let's put that right here. And we're not going to do anything with residuals at this point. Press OK. Here's my regression output. Again, I like to clean it up a little bit. So I'll stretch out this first column to about a width of 12. Uh, we have duplicate confidence interval information here. So I'll delete the duplicate part. Just erase over it. I like to format to three decimal places, generally. Okay, and then uh, we could format maybe this to, the numbers are kind of large in the uh, ANOVA table here. I'll format the one decimal place with a comma. This is really the p-value for the f-test. I'll just abbreviate it, significance of f. And these are coefficients, and these are my standard errors. And this is my adjusted r-squared. And this is my S, or residual standard deviation, with the, which Excel calls standard error. Um, okay, so this looks like nice cleaned up output. I like to write the regression equation right below it. So our response here is pulse. So these are our fitted pulse is makes up our equation. And I'll go the intercept plus the slope coefficient for incline plus the slope co coefficient for speed. There's my multiple regression equation. Now in another video I'll show you that 
uh, since I have a quantitative x1, a quantitative x2, and a quantitative response, this equation can be graphed as a plane in three dimensions. And I'll show you that in another video. But uh, for the rest of this video, let's just interpret the output quickly. Our main statistics and regression output are r squared, s, the residual standard deviation. r squared is the coefficient of determination. In this case, 79.1% of the variability in my pulse rate is explained by incline and speed. My standard error, s, or residual standard deviation, tells us that the typical deviation between the actual pulse rate and what this model says they should be is about 4.67 pulse units. That doesn't seem too bad, uh, given that my pulse rates were in the vicinity of 110 to 150. Here's the ANOVA table. Overall, the regression is significant. I have a very large F statistic. And then we have our coefficients down here. My intercept, this says that my pulse rate would be 58 if I wasn't walking and, my had a, and I had a zero incline. But that would be an extrapolation because I did not have any data here where I wasn't walking, even though I did have an incline of zero. So we wouldn't interpret this as a point prediction given incline and speed are zero. However, it sets the height of my plane and I needed to make predictions within the range of incline from 0 to 8 and pulse from 3.6 to 4.8. My coefficient for incline is telling me, first of all, I know that it's statistically significant and so is speed. Uh, my coefficient for incline is telling me um, holding speed constant I can expect my pulse rate to go up on average by 1.7 units for each one unit increase in the incline scale. And uh, this confidence interval output over here tells me, uh, although this is my best guess as to how incline is affecting my pulse rate, this gives me a range of reasonable values for how that uh, impact really is. So in other words, there's a 95% uh, there's 95% confidence that the uh, actual impact is between 1.2 units and 2.3 units on my pulse rate scale for each one unit incline, uh, one unit increase in the incline. Okay, uh, speed. This says for each one mile per hour faster, I'm walking on the treadmill holding incline constant, I can expect my pulse rate to be higher by about 15 units. And that is statistically significant. And in fact, its T ratio is a little bit bigger than the incline T ratio. So this is the slightly stronger variable. Okay, so that's interpreting the results of a, a basic multiple regression model, only two predictor variables. That's it.